Hello. In this video, we will be discussing the types of internal loads that are generated inside of the material in response to an applied load. Now in statics, we learned how to look at common structures, such as beams, and how to figure out the support reactions that were required in order for the structure to remain stationary. And we did this by placing the beam in what we called static equilibrium. Now let's take a quick peek at an example to see just how this is done. In this example, we have a cantilever beam that is 10 meters long. The beam is attached to a rigid wall at point A, and between points B and C, it is subjected to a distributed load of 5 kilonewtons per meter. Now your first step in analyzing any of these problems should always be to draw a free body diagram. And in order to do that, I'm just going to get rid of the wall so that we can then observe what reaction forces are generated there and also just hide a few of the other things on this so that we can really focus on the beam itself. Since this is a cantilever beam we're analyzing, we can actually break down the possible reaction force vector at the wall into two components, one in the positive x direction and one shown in the positive y direction. Furthermore, we can also have a potential moment at the wall itself, and this is also drawn in the positive direction. Finally, in order to finish off our free body diagram, we can replace the distributed load with a concentrated equivalent load. Notice that this is the same magnitude as the initial distributed force was, which would be 5 kilonewtons per meter times the 3 meters, and it's located at the centroid of that distributed force. Or, in the case of a uniform distributed load, that means it'll be directly in the middle. Now that we have the free body diagram, it's a fairly simple matter to move forward and use the equations of static equilibrium to discover what the reaction force is at the wall. First, if we sum the forces in the x direction, we find out an almost trivial solution that there is no reaction force in the x direction. Next, if we sum the forces in the y direction, we see that at the wall, we have to have a y reaction force that balances the distributed load of 15 kilonewtons. And finally, we see that if we sum the moments about point A, we have to have a reaction moment at the wall itself. And this reaction moment is due to the applied load, which has a magnitude of 15 kilonewtons, times its moment arm of 8.5 meters. And for that reason, we get a reaction moment of 127.5 kilonewton meters.